Well, howdy, howdy, howdy. Nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys, girls, and all of our non-binary friends. And remember, no matter who you are, you are valid. And welcome to this, a brand new day. It was raining, and I went walkies. I went walkies. Pretty good walkies already. It's around noonish, so it's not like I did anything special. But I went out and it was raining, so nice and wet. Stopped off at Walmart, got some beans, and that's good. Some pinto beans, some chili beans, of course they're chili type beans. But kidney beans, red kidney beans, so that's good. And, and I discovered something today watching a science type thing. I have known since forever that caffeine is good for you. It has negatives attached to it. If you're one of those who is more sensitive to caffeine, where you can't have it in the afternoon or you're not going to sleep that night, you know about the negatives. But the thing is, the positives are actually amazing. You do function better mentally if you are addicted to caffeine and getting your caffeine fix. You do function better physically if you are addicted to caffeine and getting your caffeine fix. But with those positives come the negatives. I have been drinking, along with the black tea that I have, some green tea now. And I have for a while. And I'm going to continue doing so because on that science thing they're talking about just that. The positives of caffeine and the negatives. But there's the, a substance in green tea, like L-thyrene, I think was the name, that it damps down the negative effects of caffeine while boosting up the positives. A normal caffeine chart in your body might go like this, and then a quick, and then tapers off like, like a pretty solid leap and then dive. And with L-thyrene, it doesn't go as high, but it goes like this. And it stays flat and slowly goes down. So all of the good stuff, and it gets rid of as much of the bad stuff. So yeah, I'm going to be drinking a lot more green tea. Like, yeah. <laughs> so thumbs up on that. It's a very good thing. Past that, I am confused. I stopped in at the clinic yesterday, because was it yesterday I had my appointment or the day before? It was the day before I had my appointment, something like that. But I had deliberately stopped off at the counter and I said, do I have any appointments coming up? And they said, you do not. And then a little bit before starting to record, I got a message on my phone saying, Did you go to your appointment today? So I call up the place where I would have had an appointment and they said, Nope, you didn't miss anything. So I don't know what it was. Especially since it was for a community care program through the Veterans Administration in town. And the only community care place I have in town is the clinic where they said, nope, you didn't miss anything. So I don't know what's happening. Something's going on and I'm getting caught in the middle. So yay. And then past that, I have not done much. I mean, literally. Oh boy, it has been bad weather this morning, and yesterday I did some walkies, but I've been, I mean, I don't even think I managed to play even Fallout 3 yesterday. Boy, that's awful. I watched videos, and I read some rule books, but I didn't actually do anything. Ugh. It has been a bad brain week, and I mean literally. I mentioned how a couple of days back my brain did something that's kind of scary. And if I ever have anything like that happen again, I'm heading right to the ER because I don't want my brain to not work. But I mentioned how getting, a, getting to 
an area where I could cross the street. I lost track of absolutely everything I was thinking of, feeling weird while it was happening. Then I got exceptionally dizzy and then the dizziness went away and suddenly I could remember everything. So something went on inside my brain and that's not good. So thumbs up. But I've been trying to do things and doing as best I can. I was open. I was opening up and looking at things. I got this close. I got this close. I got this close. Not this close. I got this close to actually playing Bag of Dungeon. But then I do the things that aren't playing the game, but I still enjoy. So even when I'm not playing the game, I'm still enjoying owning the game because I opened up the first bag of dungeon and then I started looking at the characters and then I remembered that I've got all of the bag of dungeon stuff. I don't have any of the miniatures, I don't have any of the extraneous stuff, but when it comes to game stuff, there's bag of dungeon 1, bag of dungeon 2, and then something called heroes or legends where it adds a couple more rule things a couple more stuff for multiplayer and then a whole handful of new heroes and so I picked up my first set of heroes remembered that they had the legends one got that out then I got bag of dungeon 2 out so I got all the characters in the one place that keep in one spot you know and there's a lot I really do need to play bag of dungeon for the channel and bag of dungeon 2 which I'll explain a bit of but it's while the rule book is annoying, I actually printed out the 2.2 rule book and the 3.0 rule book, and I want to do a flip through on both to show you the differences, because there's a big difference in the presentation of the rules, and I don't know which is better. So, thumbs up on that, but got all the characters together, have all the rules for the characters in one place, because there are skill cards introduced for at least some of the characters which gives them skills that you can get through experience which is if you you can take a skill point instead of taking an item if you have a card that you can start unlocking skills on so that's cool progression but the first bag of dungeon is you're traveling through a dungeon and you're gathering up tiles as you travel and you're setting them down to discover what the dungeon looks like. So every game is going to be different because the dungeon's going to be different because you're creating it as you play. It does have a, some irritating things about it and some parts of just the way the rule book is left open leaves me just uh, wanting to pull my hair out. But that's life. It's still a good game. Bag of Dungeon 2, snort, takes this to an overland perspective. You're not going through a uh, subterranean dungeon. You are traveling through an overland labyrinth, a forest, if you will. But if you have both sets, there are spots on the overland map that look like little doors with tile with tiles with uh, what are those things you walk on they're they're the stone markers road things that you walk on gods above but it's it looks like that which you can ignore easily if you don't have the other game but if you have bag of dungeon one you those are entrances and you just take your bag of dungeon one stuff and start drawing those tiles because you took a door into an underground dungeon part which you can leave from i believe without having to solve anything but i'm not sure so that's cool it's combining them together just like with deck of dungeon deck of dungeon one deck dungeon which I've showed off, but I'll have to show off another thing again. It, there is an expansion for it, which is like the Forest of Shadows, something like that, which the rules are the same. 
In fact, I believe it's this one rule book that they use with both games. It's a, there's a, a rule for like poison, which if you only have the first game, you ignore that part. And if you have the second one, then you do. But there's also a way to combine the two of them together and play them as one big game. That one would be scary because if you go back and you walk, look at my one deck dungeon, which I want to play again as stated, it is an intense game. So thumbs up for that. So I have been trying to think, I have been trying to do as much as I can, and I have been having difficulties just just a, a large part of it is I, because of my pain issues, because of the nerve compression, I am having more trouble than usual sleeping. My arms hurt so much because I don't move at night. Most people, if they ache, you will come to half awake state, you will turn, and then you will fall back into a full sleep. That's how people kick, do stuff, move while still being asleep. When I settle down to fall asleep, it's like I'm dead. I don't move until I come to full wakefulness. So when my arms start to hurt, they go all the way to aching to full wakefulness pain before I can do anything about it, at which point well, it's a control problem. It's one of those things that, at least when I was going through in nursing class, they're taught with, you know, trying to control pain with the people that you're helping. Because if you wait until pain is out of control before you start to treat it, well, if you've got like 50 milligrams of pain-killing medication, that if you take it X number of times before things get out of control, it keeps your pain here, but you let it get up to here before you take it, it's only gonna bring it down to about here. When you should be here. So you're really hurting. And that's the state here. By the time I'm up that far, there's really not much anything at all I can do about it. The, the threshold for action was passed long ago while I was still asleep. So, going on that. But that's just explaining some of the motivational issues and such like that. I'm still trying my very best. Also, trying to get out and be as active as possible. I also need to change some of my recording times because, once again, I keep trying to do habit stuff. Record after, say, 6 o'clock p.m. For, in, for anything at all problem is with all the things going on and less energy thus fewer spoons to portion out and spend for each activity waiting until after six o'clock might mean I only have two or three spoons left to do an 18 spoon project so I need to start adapting and doing these things like one two o'clock which as an autistic person who really needs habit and routine, a change like that is pretty heavy duty. But just the fact that I have gone from living in a home to being homeless to being in a homeless shelter to being here and not having crashed and burned mentally kind of proves I can adapt a bit. I think I can probably adapt a bit and change some recording times. <laughs> there are some other things that I also want to do. Some of the people here, well, one of the people here, you can't really put a lot of junk outside on your porch. If the porches aren't for that and there's like fire hazard stuff like that, they need to have full passage, etc., etc. There's, you sign a lease, you can't have like just garbage. But there are some things you can have. And one of the people here has some like those like ceramic animals that you would that you know old old folk like me buy. And I was looking at those and I'm, those are neat. So on my payday, I'm hoping to get an animal or two. You know, they're 
what, plaster? Well, not plaster, they'd just melt, but cheap thing and then put it out there and it would look kind of cool. <laughs> and I want to get a, a maybe a planter with a plant in it, an actual plant, something green and growing. I've actually, because we actually have a new gardenish type area here and things have been growing inside of it, I have actually had that old man urge of standing up there and just watering the plants with a hose. <laughs> I never do that stuff, but that old man urge to, to do a gardening thing has got hold of me, so thumbs up on that. Might get involved with it. One thing I had been thinking of my board gamey type stuff, I talked about this before and serious that I need to do this. I still have to go through, I started it and then stopped. What, what am I talking at? I'm looking at my, my container of salt instead of looking at the camera. I got a salt thing back behind my tablet to keep it from falling backwards and just being at a weird angle so there's a salt container. And for whatever reason I was looking at the salt logo and talking to it. <laughs> so now I can't even remember what I was talking about. No, yes, with, with my game and stuff. I still need to go through and decide which ones I can and can't play. Because like with that one horror game, an Arkham Asylum type thing, not Arkham Asylum, an Arkham Horror of HP Lovecraft stuff, it's got so many little fiddly bits. I know I can't do it. Oh my god, by the time I got halfway through setting it up, I would be exhausted mentally, and by the time I got finished, I'd be exhausted physically. So it's in my storage unit, because I can't. I am... Almost completely sure that Age of Galaxy, a strategy game that you have to watch a lot of things on the board all at once, even though it gives you a very short period of turns, small, five turn game, and within each turn there are a very limited number of actions you can take before you've used up all your, you know, in that section actions. So you've really, it's a tight squeeze. It, you're not, you know, it's not a grand strategy thing. It's okay, I've got seven actions I can take. All right, that's the first of five. So it goes by fast in that fashion. But you've got a lot on the board that has to be taken in all at the same time. So not sure I can do it. And a fair number of fiddly bits. There was another one I was looking at, and I can't remember what it was, that it had, it's got fiddly bits, but not too many. One of the other ones that I'm not too sure, because the whole fiddly bits part is uh, something warp. <laughs> I've forgotten even the title, and I was looking at it and re trying to figure out how to play it, yes, not yesterday, a couple days back, and I can't even remember the title. But it's kind of fiddly, but I was watching a video on it, and it's fiddly, but also kind of quick at it. It uses cards and actions, and the actions are, the actions make up a turn, but a turn is of a variable length, and once that variable length turn is done then one of the warps of the mothership passes and you only have a certain number of warps before the game's over and you've lost you have as little as like four and again they are of arbitrary length it depends on the cards and the uses and which cards you have it might just be a pretty quick turn, or a pretty quick warp, or it might be a long one. But at the same time, it's not that deep. Not everything has to be looked at all at the same time. You have to destroy the entire mothership, and it's in three pieces. And one of them on the video that I was watching has the very annoying first thing you have to do is destroy all of the ships that are defending it and one of the things that happens is it puts down these cards with ships on them and then you have to have cards that you power up with tokens 
and then you try to destroy those ships. Well, each one of those warps that you're destroying the ships, you're not destroying the mother ship. So, I'm gonna work on that one and see if it's too fiddly or not. As stated, Final Girl gets really close to being too fiddly. There's a lot of stuff that you gotta take care of, but you can focus in on each individual part. Getting it set up is rough. Once it's set up, not that bad. So that's a definite gonna stay there. But I wanna go through and then I wanna show, and then the bigger plan, the whole reason I was talking about it this way, was I'm gonna have enough that I wanna take them and do a rotation thing where like for each month I take one off the top, it goes into storage, and then I take the one off the top in storage, and then I bring it and put it at the bottom here, and then this one goes at the bottom in storage. Because there's going to be, I don't want to make it a job. Because if it's a job to play the games, I'm not going to enjoy it. So I want to make it fun, which means I can't make a schedule of, okay, I got to play this one on this day, 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 and if I miss, I have to make it up with, no. So just put some of them in storage and then work with the smaller subset and then keep the rotation going. So thumbs up on that. Because I mentioned I had, I remembered the way I talked. I remembered the way I had talked about this before being the idea I would play a game for a month. But part of that is I also want to play it for the channel for a month so that Every, I'm not every single day for the channel because I would go insane but like once a week show off on the channel a game with how I've learned and how much I've done just to give the game a proper showing off because again I still want to do that space, space, in, space marine adventures labyrinth of the necrons a game a play for the channel Actually, that was one of the things that I learned really... I'm not good at picking up things. I'm not good at peopling. But one of the things I learned fast through experiencing it firsthand was when I was in the military, 19 years old in basic training, and I had the drill sergeant in my face yelling at me to get information. And rather than sit there and get flustered, I just shut my eyes so that I didn't have to deal with him. Thought, came up with the answer, opened my eyes, said it, and then he immediately walked on to the next person. Cut out somehow the sensory overload that's getting you. Don't do anything like, you know, poke your fingers in your ears and la la la. No, there's extremes, but if you have to, under a proper contextual time, like not when you're racing down the freeway, like I just did a bit ago, shut your eyes so that you can get it done. Your brain spends the bulk of its processing power from our senses through here. It's all this, so if you shut off this, that's a whole lot of processing power you suddenly freed up. Yay. Well, I've managed to yammer for quite a long time here, so thank you so very, very much for listening. Uh, 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 I'm trying to find something to, to, uh, uh, green tea, even though this is the constant comment. Hmm, I didn't choke again. That time I choked, like yesterday I think it was, on my tea while I was drinking it. That's like the first time I've choked on fluids in ages. Even though I've already, there's candies that I have that stopped eating now for my own sake. Because if I don't, I'm going to choke to death. It, those little disc type things, I was eating some cinnamon discs. And one of those discs went and started to go right back 
so they could slide down and choke me. And I caught it, and I said, okay, this keeps happening. No more or I'm going to die. So thumbs up on that. Getting fun is, getting old is fun. Oh, yes, which also really reminds me before I sign off. It's only five months from now before I have my username changed that I have been talking about for for a long time now. My plan has been until I reach the age of 62 when I'm officially <laughs> a senior citizen to go from nearly senior citizen to the name change of finally senior citizen that's only five months away with my 62nd birthday so oh boy I'm looking forward to that as I think you can probably tell <laughs> anyway though if you're a Patreon patron thumbs up and thank you your help is appreciated very very much oh my gosh Without your help, I would be a badly hurting monkey. Instead of just a hurting monkey, which I'm not saying that that you're not doing well. You, again, you brought me from down here to up here. Comparable to a lot of what most of America is going through. Oh my gosh. There is just so many people are paycheck to paycheck. And you've helped bring me up to that. So that is appreciated. It's better than them being underfoot constantly. Hopefully I made some sense. So even though I can't put your names up here, when you look in the mirror, you are beautiful and awesome. Physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. For everybody, <coughs> that wasn't English. For everybody that leaves me comments, thumbs up, and thank you. I appreciate each one of them that is not abusive. You can be rude without being abusive and I'm not gonna take the comments down only the ones that are abusive towards me or any of the other people that leave comments I take those ones down everything else you can disagree with me violently and it's gonna stay up there as long as you're not abusive and the, each and every one of these comments is appreciated thumbs up and thank you I cannot answer as many as I would like but I answer as many as I can so greatly appreciated each and every one of you so hokey smokes, only half hour, it's gonna take the rest of the afternoon, it's gonna be like six o'clock before I'm all done getting this uploaded. Probably, you know, just as a guess. So, until we meet again, you take care, have a great day today, I will see you on the flip side, and that is indeed a very good thing. And then once again, this, if you don't know, you know it's, uh, this is, uh, American Sign Language when I do I, L, and Y it's just, just put it together and it's I love you and while that doesn't mean I love you personally uh, it means that as one human being to another who wishes the best for you I love you and I hope you don't die today so thumbs up and I'll talk to y'all later